In today's notes, we're going to learn about the factor label method. This is a really useful tool for being able to logically work your way through conversions to turn one type of unit into another. This is something you've already learned in chemistry, so we're going to go through it really quick just to make sure it's fresh in your head. So let's imagine we're at an Eagles game and we know that from goal line to goal line is 100 yards. And let's say we want to convert that over to meters to tell someone who is not from America because they're not really familiar with yards. So here's how the factor label system works. You start with the original, written as a fraction. Then you multiply by a fraction equal to one. What does that mean? It means that the top and the bottom are equal to each other. So when you divide three feet by one yard, you get one. Why are yards on the bottom? Because we want to cancel with the yards on top. Then we want to turn it from feet into meters. So we multiply by another fraction equal to one. Because one meter is equivalent to 3.281 feet. And this time the feet cancel and we're left with just meters. So this is how you set up a factor label. The original multiplied by fractions equal to one. When do you stop? When you're at the unit that you desire. How do you know what goes on top and what goes on the bottom? By making sure things cancel. Things on the bottom cancel with things up top. Let's try one more, and this one's kind of tricky. You may not have ever done one like this before. Let's say we have Usain Bolt, and let's say he's running into a headwind that is 0.9 meters per second, and we want to convert it to miles per hour. So to do this with factor label is kind of tricky. This is our original fraction. We want to get rid of the meters. So in our next fraction, we have meters on the bottom and we want to turn it to miles so the miles go up top. But we're not done. We also want to get rid of the seconds. So we put the seconds on top, the minutes on the bottom. We turn seconds into minutes. And then we want to convert minutes into hours. So we have minutes on the bottom, minutes on top, and then when it's all said and done, the only thing left, the only thing that didn't cancel is miles per hour. So again, every fraction is equal to one, one and one. One hour is 60 minutes. One minute is 60 seconds. Cancel things until you're left with the unit that you want. So the headwind, and actually I think this was actually a wind from behind, was 2.01 miles per hour. Okay, so I'd like you to write these down in your notes, make this chart, pause if you have to. These are some of the more common length conversions that you're going to have to use this year. Pause if necessary. And then when you're done, unpause. So what you're going to have to do to prove to me understand the factor label method is score 10 in a row right on this challenge. So when you open up the challenge, it will give you 10 different problems in order. So the first one for me is right here. It says I have 929.6 centimeters. So you'll notice in all of the fractions, that's how we start. So all of these are possibly correct. It wants us to turn the centimeters into millimeters. So if we're gonna get rid of the centimeters, we gotta have the centimeters on the bottom. So that cannot be right. This cannot be right. These two are both plausible. To see which one is correct, we'll go back to our chart and we'll see that 10 millimeters is one centimeter. So we have to pick the one that has the 10 with the millimeters. 
So that would be this one. This is the one you should select. This is not correct. One millimeter is not the same as 10 centimeters. So the only viable choice is this one. You're gonna get 10 of these that all rely on this chart. Okay, so try to get 10 in a row right, take your screenshot and share it with me.